Okay, so Michael, welcome back. We're recording now. So knowing that whatever we say or do now on screen uh, has been joined by the awesome viewer on YouTube. Hi, viewer. <laughs> so um, yeah, Michael, we're going to have a chat today about values, what they are, how we can get them, how important they are to the lonely, um, the lonely gay man slash lonely person. Um, and yeah, I, I got you back on the show because of the podcast that you're on, um, that you host, um, Gay Men Going Deeper. Yeah. Which I've been totally binging on, on the train. Yay, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't say I like it. I just said I'm binging on it. <laughs> That's all that matters for us. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, and, and you know, you and I have had a few chats and, you know, you talk about how important values are, et cetera, um, to you. But then there was a conversation in one of the recent episodes and you're like, I'm like the values queen. I think that might be the... The, the the actual quote that you said um, what i said i think so it's like you know like and and you know i'm all about values uh and and you know let's have that conversation and i'm like hmm, let's have that conversation <laughs> so oh, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna have that conversation but you good yep i'm all good i'm really excited to have this conversation whether i'm the values queen or not i'm not sure but i do i do use them a lot in my own life and in my coaching all, all my coaching clients know that values is one of the first things I talk about so yeah great conversation I'm happy to be here with you again so uh, thank you again for having me not at all not at all so I, I I was just fiddling with the with the knobs there uh to make sure that everything was was looking okay on the electronic thing down there um okay. before I press record so that sounds yeah. all good okay. yeah do you want to just say the the alphabet in reverse I'm not doing it. <laughs> Goes against my value system, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, with that awkwardness aside, let's uh let's press pull. Well not play, let's press record. All right. View out, you good? All right, you've got your coffee, you're all like set, ready to go. All right. Okay, everything is looking like it's recording there. So let's do it. You good, Michael? Yep, I'm all good. Right. All right. Hey, welcome to Connection Over Coffee with me, Phil McCall of The Loneliness Guy. Today, we're having a chat with Michael DiOrio from Wellismo Coaching about value. Say hi, Michael. Hi, listener, viewer. People. Everyone. <laughs> um, this episode, before we go on, this episode contains uh, content relating to the physical, mental, and emotional well-being of gay men. If uh, it, um, it it contains content that may offend, um, no, what was that? What was that about? I, I'm, viewer, you know that I'm going off script. I'm going to have to edit this bit. I completely lost my train of thought. I was <laughs> going to say the same thing twice. This is not. This is why I usually have a script. But I thought, you know, I've done it so many times that I can remember it now by heart. Apparently not. Okay, so I'm going to just say that bit again. Go for it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this podcast uh, contains content relating to the mental, physical, and emotional well being of gay men. If that's going to offend you or anyone in earshot, now's the time for you to go. But with all of that said, Michael, why don't you and the listener slash viewer go and get us a table and I'll go get the coffee sorted. Okay, awesome. Yay. <laughs> All right. Okay, here you go. So if this is the first time that you've joined me for Connection Over Coffee, I want to say a huge welcome and recognise that you may have taken an enormous step as a gay man who is working through the thoughts and feelings, the awful thoughts and feelings that you might be lonely and experiencing some loneliness. I recognize the bravery and courage that it took 
to simply press play on this episode. And I hope you can take just a moment right now to recognize the bravery and the courage that you have demonstrated in taking what on paper looks and feels like a very small step. But we know that working through, making the decision, the active decision to work through the thoughts and feelings of loneliness takes courage. And that courage was exemplified in you simply pressing play. Welcome. And welcome back if you are a regular listener. It's awesome. And if you are a regular listener, you'll know that this is Michael's third time on the on, on Connection Over Coffee with the Loneliness Guy. Michael, welcome back. I think that we could probably call you a co-host almost now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would be honored. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me back, Phil. No, not at all. And and before we press record, Michael, I did say that, you know, I've been receiving some feedback and particularly the episodes that you and I have done. Um, and the feedback has been exactly how I envisaged, envisaged, envisaged this, um, maybe another, another sip of coffee to get the, <laughs> to get the, the words going again, but it's how I envisaged it. Um, like, sitting, having a chat, a real chat about something that really matters over a cup of coffee and that we're getting feedback. You and I are getting feedback that, you know, the listener feels like they are sitting here in a, in a coffee shop, joining us virtually wherever they are in the world for a real chat. How awesome is that? That is awesome because let me tell you, we are in a pandemic here and so... I live alone, and so this this does feel like the sometimes the only connection I get. And it, and I mean, I have my my favorite mug slash your favorite mug. I know. I have a viewer, listener, and it actually is virtual as it may be the only connection that I do get these days. So I appreciate you hosting this and creating the space for us to do this. Michael, I, I just want to reach through Zoom right now um, <laughs> and and give you a hug. Um, so if, uh, in case you've not met Michael before. He is a wellness coach in, um, in Toronto uh, and uh, up, up there in Canada and I'm here in New Zealand. Um, and yet we've never actually physically met, have we? No, no, no not even close. We're no. on opposite sides of the world. <laughs> no, no. And, and, um, and yeah, it, it, this, this, I, I've actually been reflecting on this lately as more of the world has gone back into lockdown, yeah. uh, and, you know, during second waves and, and, you know, my, one of my homes uh, in, in the world, not that I like, not like physical houses, but one of the, the many places in the world that I call home is Melbourne and Melbourne has just emerged from um, from a very long time uh, in lockdown to combat its second wave. And one of the things that I find that we have um, as a global community, gay, straight, whatever, as people, that we realise the, the importance of connection. And this, you know, we, we need to get connection how we can at the moment. And, and this does a pretty good job of substituting for sitting and having a real coffee physically face to face. So I'm glad that you feel that too. Um, yeah. And yeah, um, a, a reminder, listener, um, and, and Michael and me, like, you know, wear a face mask. <laughs> Uh, and the science doesn't care what you think or what you believe. Science just, you know, the, the virus really just don't give it a place to go. Um, and I'm feeling incredibly grateful to be here in New Zealand uh, where things are pretty much, pretty much um, back to normal, but just being COVID aware. All right. But Michael, we're not talking about COVID. We're not, um, we're not going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking today about values. Yep. <laughs> and values at once. Um, well, sorry. I published 
uh, on Thursday, the 12th of November, 2020, a blog post called, who are you? Uh, question mark. Uh, and it was all about values and the importance of values. And at once values, Michael, appear to be, you know, something that's, that's, that's great. And in some of the, in some of the literature that I've been putting on social media over the last few days, it's about, you know, it's all, it's all about, you know, in, enlightened, enlightened people on the internet get to have values, but the real person reading, reading the, the, the content sort of goes, oh, that's great. But, you know, I don't have time for that, or I don't know how to do it or whatever. But values are for everyone, right? 100%. Yeah. And we all, have, we all have them, whether we know them or not, whether we're living by them, but we're always living by them one way or another, but we all have them. Yeah. Yeah. How important are they? Extremely important. Um, so I'm a confidence coach. For those of you who don't know the coaching I do, I coach gay men and my specialty is confidence. And believe it or not, values have everything to do with confidence. It has nothing to do with how much money you have, what your body looks like, or what kind of relationship you're in. That's what people think confidence is about. But confidence comes from having, like you said in your blog, Phil, very nice blog, by the way. Um, Thank you. It, it comes from living in integrity with your authentic self, right? And so when you do that, and when you practice that more often than not, and you're not always going to get it right, that's for sure. But when you practice that more often than not, and you're living in alignment with your values, it becomes easier to be you. And when it's easier to be you, it's easier to love yourself. So it's easier yeah. to love yourself when you're being yourself. And when you love yourself, you are just naturally exuding confidence. Right. And so that's sort of how my programs run. The, one of the very first things we do is a values exercise. One of, the, one of the first components of the program is values. And we look at what your values are, and then they fall into two piles usually, right? Like aspirational values, which you, you talked about in your blog as well, and then the ones that you're actually living by today. And sometimes they overlap. I imagine a Venn diagram. Yeah. Where there's one circle here and one circle here. And sometimes you have ones that are in the middle, and then other ones are sort of on the side. Yeah, I, in, in the blog, I had the image of, you know, I don't know, the, 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 the image of someone wearing a suit and in having values, it's, uh, and, and working out how your values are, it's kind of physically, and I'm, I'm very, I'm very visual. I had in my mind's eye, someone who, who was wearing values and it was a hundred dollar suit or off the rack that fits everyone, but fits no one. Sure, it's a suit, you know, uh, and but that's the difference, like spending some time, spending some time going to a tailor, getting a suit made for you and the confidence, at least within me um, and, and, you know, in, in my regular work, uh, you know, wearing, wearing a suit that has been a, a bespoke suit, like the confidence that you get from wearing something that is just for you right? versus or, or that, not the confidence, but the feeling that you get within yourself that, you know, you know, you, you, you look good, you feel good. And as opposed to wearing a hundred dollar off the rack suit made of, I don't know, something that if you put it too close to naked flame is going to end badly. Right. And, and that's just it because when you're, what a lot of us do, is because we're socialized that way is we, we live by other people's values. We live by society's values. We're putting on and other so when we're living suits. by society's values, yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. It's like putting on, it's like wearing somebody else's clothes. Like this doesn't fit right. doesn't seem right. It's not for me. I actually don't even like it that much, but this is what I was given. So I guess this is what I'm going to wear. And that I love that analogy because it's, it's, it works perfectly. Thanks. It's yeah. And you know, yep. A suit is a suit is a suit. Values are values are values are values. But unless we actually take time, invest, investing in time uh, and, uh, and, and working out what fits us best. Yes. You know, it mightn't be the navy pinstripe suit. It might be the charcoal gray that actually suits, that, that feels better. Yeah, um, it might be pink. It might be a, it might be a dress. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It could be whatever you want it to be. 
And, yeah. and, and the hard part is owning that while well, first becoming aware of what, what that fit is and what it is that you want, what color, what design, and then putting it on and actually feeling okay in it, which is a whole other piece of the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. I, I really should get um, Jeff in on this conversation. Uh, he makes clothes uh, oh. and when when he, yeah, I know he's very clever. Um, so listener viewer, Jeff is my partner. Uh, and so when Jeff listens back to this, uh, he's, I, I, I think I might not need to be in the room or in earshot because if we just yell, he's like, you're getting the terminology all wrong. Um, and <laughs> so yeah. Sorry, uh, Sorry Jeff. <laughs> So yeah, I'll be like, you know, cloth and thread and needles and stuff. So uh, I think we've probably exhausted my my tailoring knowledge, but but it's true. Like a, a little bit of time invested in working out what is uh, uh, what what fits you, and then critically knowing why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I did a values exercise. I think the first time I did it, I, I was used to be working in corporate, and so we kind of did those like leadership seminars. And one of the things we did was values, but they're more leadership values. Yeah, and that's a bit different. It's similar but different <clears throat> when you kind of look at your entire life. First step is always knowing what they are, and then realizing that they change over time. As you change, we all change. Your values come and go. Some get stronger, some fade away to the back. Other ones stay there all the time, like are just kind of constant, at least for me. And then I call those the core, like core few that are always there and then some supporting ones that come and go. Yeah, I, I completely um, agree that the that values do need to evolve over time as we grow. Yes. Um, and I also have in my mind, like the, the, the importance of values and I don't know, like when, I don't know, I wrote this in my blog post, but talking about them being signposts, like guideposts, whatever we want to call it when we're making a decision. And sometimes when we hear that, and certainly me being, you know, very pragmatic when someone says, oh, you know, it helps make those big, big life decisions or, or like decisions and I automatically leap to life decisions. And, you know, do I accept this job or do I leave this job or whatever? Like the workplace and values are very, uh, like give, give very live examples because quite often, as you say, given, you know, what you just said there, Michael, about when we first do a, lead, a, a values exercise, it's, it's like a leadership thing um, at work. Yeah. Of course, there are similarities, but you know, it's it's also an exercise in group think potentially as well. Um, yeah. uh, and you know what we should have, and you know, values turn into aspirational statements, not what we are. Yeah, and then that should that should is a very important one. Um, because <clears throat> what happens a lot of the time is we think we should be, you know, I hear honesty, you know, uh, generosity, all of these ones that sound so nice, but that's sort of what was given to us. It's, it's the, it's the sort of off the rack suit that you're talking about. Of course, like everyone would love all to have the value of honesty, but I mean, in my work, I noticed that that's not actually a value. A lot of people have, um, certainly didn't show up on my list at all. Never, never has. I mean, I, I would want it to, if I was a leader, I'd be like, oh yes, hard work and ethics and honesty. That's what I would want my values to be, but it's not what is actually in practice. And that's it. It's the practice and being yeah. okay with like the, the, the shoulds, the theory, the things that we really think that we should, we kind of maybe really need to have or yeah. want to have and, and goals. They can be goals. Yeah, those are goals. Yeah, not necessarily values, but they they kind of go together. The way the the way that I teach it is your va your aspirational values. So let's say you want to value. I'll give you one of mine for an example. Um, freedom. <clears throat> freedom has always been like one of my top two. <laughs> it's either one or two for me. Yeah. 
And I wasn't always living in a space of freedom. I wasn't always practicing sort of what I, what I wanted. So it was an aspirational value. Now that I'm an entrepreneur, I am more aligned with that value of freedom. And so my goals are meant to get me more aligned into that value. So if you imagine the Venn diagram, my goals actually help those two circles collide or combine. So the goals lead to, if you're doing them right and you achieve your goals, then you will be more in aligned with your values. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a really good example of how, yeah, the, the like w- what is can help align with what we want to be yeah. for ourselves. And I think there's, there's, a, there's a very common denominator under all of this and that that is that it, you know, it's that bespoke nature. It's the for us. It's the uniqueness of us and knowing who and what we are. And that's when it comes to loneliness and, you know, people like me, um, you know, uh, kind of interpreting the put yourself out there, um, popular cure um, that's given by Dr. Google for, for loneliness is put yourself out there. It's, not focusing on the out there it's the focusing on yourself yeah and values uh and knowing your values getting very clear on your values and then beginning to live them imperfectly but making conscious steps taking conscious steps to live values those those small conscious steps at every opportunity at every decision point can help us take enormous steps to getting that authentic connection that we need as humans as gay men to to work through those those uncomfortable thoughts and feelings of loneliness so that's the key right there um, and, and, you know, it does, does sound very ethereal. It does sound very, you know, nebulous or, or something for those, um, enlightened, you know, gurus on the internet, like, no, 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 it's, it's for everyone. Um, and, and you and me are pretty everyone. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. and so the, how do, how do we go about, um, how do we go about getting our values, finding them out? How did you find out yours? Um, well, before I created a values exercise, which would be the easy way, <laughs> right now, I didn't, I didn't have a values exercise that I did for myself. I created one. But I would say um, it's a good question. I'm trying to put myself back like, you know, five, 10 years ago. I would look at your life, like look back and notice the things, the highlights, the top memories, and then the, the, the worst parts and ask yourself why in your blog flow, I like that you ask those five whys. Mm. So for example, one of the highlights of my life was, uh, you know, traveling all around Europe. Why? Uh, well, it was because I was exploring new countries um, and that, that was really thrilling for me. Why? Uh, well, uh, but it gets harder to do, right? The deeper you go, but then eventually what you'll end up with, what I ended up with was freedom. Yeah. That freedom to explore, that independence. And so I have the core value of freedom and a bunch of sub values, exploration, independence, um, experiences, and all these other things that kind of tie into freedom. And then what you'll notice, if you look at the sort of highlights of your life and the lowlights of your life, and you keep doing that why exercise, you'll come up with sometimes they will actually match up. So freedom here in a, in a highlight, one of the, you know, uh, a low point of your life could be something that lacked freedom. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wow, look at that. Freedom was at the core of both of the high point and the low point. So that's one way to do it. Look at the worst parts and sort of most pain you've been in, the most angry you've been. Look at your triggers for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then look at the, the best parts of your life and ask why. And read Phil's blog, because <laughs> yeah. there's a great example there, which I love that you said that you have to keep asking why. And it, the thing is, and you know this because you've done it, it's not easy. The answers aren't just there. Like when I ask myself, why do I love traveling? I don't know. I just do. Yeah. 
but do the work to ask yourself why. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think that's that's when when that trick was shared with me, and it actually came uh, at, uh, during a a uh, like a, a training program to do to be a coach in my employing uh, within my employer. And that's where I learned the five whys. Uh, and um, yeah, like, you know, it's tempting to stop at the third why. Or, yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's, it's tempting to stop at the fourth why because it, by the fourth why, it's starting to get a bit hard. Yeah. And then the, the fifth why um, talks about, yeah, you, know, you know, that actually might take a bit of time. It's not something that you do, like, it's not a, it's not a test. It's not an exam. You don't like. Exactly. There's not 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 seventeen other questions that you've got to finish in an hour. Those five whys could actually take, you know, hours, months, like days, months, years, even to get to that fifth why. Uh, and that answer no to that answer. fifth why. And there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. Like this is your values. I think if if you're worried about what you're going to say, then there's a lot of should going on in your brain. It's like, well, what should I say? It's like, no, 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 just say whatever it is. Like, whatever it is. Right. And that's what will lead you to your values. And, and, and that will lead you more to the authenticity, not, the, again, that tailored suit, that perfectly tailored suit, not the one off the rack. You, you, and there are no wrong answers. Like, you value what you value. Yeah. 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 So, so listener, viewer, if you haven't read the blog post, like, um, you know, what are you doing? Like press pause, go read it. No, no, no. <laughs> um, the answer, no, not the answer, but the example that I provided in the blog post was, you know, um, something that I'm sure that we can all relate to right now. Um, and it's like going to the supermarket and being in the queue, being in line to go through the checkout, and someone cuts in and you're triggered you're triggered and you know why why are you triggered well it's not fair okay why isn't it fair well it's um you know everyone's lined up uh and this person just cut the queue like all right why why is everyone lined up well you know it's what we do in society you know you take your like you take turns and you know you get served and and but then by the time you get to the fifth why it gets to, well, actually, it's about community. It's about like, you know, observing essentially the rule of law <laughs> um, and the importance of, you know, being part of community, doing your bit to be uh, a, a, as a member of society and a member of community. It's like community then becomes, or, you know, you can extrapolate that to citizenship or, or you know, a civic mindedness or whatever. But then, as Michael said, you can re-engineer that. You can tweak it to, to work back into, you know, something, something negative in inverted commas triggered you, someone jumping, jumping the line, jumping in. But then once you get to that value of community, you can then reverse engineer it towards something positive. So, you know, being part of community and, and valuing, you know, volunteerism or, you know, I don't know, seems to be something that's done in Canada. I haven't really lived, uh, well, living in Korea, that, that gets snowy, but I didn't have to, you know, shovel my way out of, you know, down a driveway and then, you know, seems to be something in, in Canada from, for, you know, my Canadian friends to, like, you know, footpath. Uh, 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 shovel snow off footpaths or someone else's driveway or something like that is the neighborly thing to do. Um, right. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's doing things like that, you know, being part of community by shoveling, you know, the snow off someone else's footpath or, or driveway or something like that. And I, I want to add something too, to this is when you know your values, you, when you're living your life, like if it's a self-awareness exercise, a, a great one, because when you are triggered, you're like, okay, I know I'm being triggered now because I value such and such a thing. Or again, when decisions are coming up, like um, I worked with a client who who was an introvert. I was, he was, and he valued solitude. 
deep down, but he didn't want to value solitude. He thought he thought that he should be um, more outgoing because I guess mm -hmm. that's the story. So it made sense when like, you know, he had an example, I, I'll never forget. He's like, my plans for my plans were canceled and I was so thrilled. I have not been, it was like the best news I could have thought was that plans were canceled. And so I was like, but yeah, but remember when we did your values exercise and he, he totally got it. He's like, now I know why that gave me such a thrill because it was a step in the direction of meeting a value. So it, it's this great self-awareness exercise and it, it will show you why you're triggered the way you are, like in Phil's example, and it will show you why you're excited and why you're joyed by the things that give you joy. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. And I think that, you know, the, the, the introverts uh, among us yeah. uh, will very like deeply resonate with things. Oh, I'm sorry that those, those plans were canceled yeah. <laughs> as you know, by the time the phone call or the text has been read or something like that, they're already in their jammies sitting on the couch under a blanket um, yeah. <laughs> recharging. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, is that the key, Michael? to finding out what our values are. Yeah, and uh, is that like that that awareness, having that mm -hmm. consciousness? You have to have awareness for sure. And paying attention to the things in your life that like, like we talked about, having the awareness and then, and then looking for, once you have that awareness, noticing how it shows up in your life. So like, like this person when his plans are canceled is like, oh yeah, okay, this, this resonates, this one matches for sure. But you always have to be paying attention because even when you're even when you're not aware of your values, what I what I find a lot is people will say their aspirational values, and those you know are ones that like we talked about, there's a lot of shoulds and I want to be this and I want to have that value. But then a great way to find out where your practiced sort of current values are is by asking yourself, where are you spending your time and where are you spending your money? And again, this is an awareness exercise. Mm. Nothing will like, you know, when we talk about values, it's, it's very like, like you said, ethereal for some people. If you want it to be a very real exercise, look at where you're spending your money. Look at your monthly budget. Where does that money go? That will give you an indication of where your values lie. Yeah. What do you do with your time? You know, like if you're sitting at home watching Netflix for, you know, five hours a day, every day, and you want, and you have a value of being uh, hardworking and ambitious and wanting to like write a book, or that's more of a goal, but still, I would question <laughs> that value. So I'd say you probably value comfort and relaxation potentially more than ambition and uh, hard work. Mm, I think that's a really, really great tip. Paying attention to where your energy goes. Specifically money and time. Yeah, yeah. You can't argue with that. You can't argue oh. with it. It's like, we all got 24 hours in the day. What do you do with it? Because that, those are active choices you're making, right? Yeah. Um, and so that will tell you where your values lie and whether you're living in your values or you're living by societies for your partners or your parents or whoever. Yeah, love right. it. Listener, viewer, did you get that? Like go like the, the, like your bank app on your phone or, you know, the, the statement that you get in the mail and look at where, where your money goes. What are you spending it on? What do you, what, what are like financially putting value on and money did you tell, tell me this, Michael, money is just, you know, uh, a form of energy um that that you know we we get to choose where we put the 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 energy i think i heard it from you and and also some sophia uh coca is um from uh um from the opm collective um was, was saying that as well so two very smart people in my life have said that um it's very true it's very true isn't it yeah. i hadn't thought yeah. of it that way um the other thing, uh, yeah, is, is knowing where you, where you get time. Because one time, once time is spent, you don't get it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic advice there, Michael. Thanks. How, how did you get your values? 
Yeah, so I did. I, not, I, not, not get your values. How did you find them out? Well, I like I did that exercise where I looked back at the highs and lows of my life. Mm -hmm. And another thing I did was I kind of looked at just the trends, like um, what always comes up for me, like what, what, what situations are always kind of, am I constantly drawn to? So one of my values is fun. And I love this one because I didn't even know it was a value. And then once I learned that it was a value, I'm like, oh my God, that makes so much sense because I'm <laughs> often drawn, introvert as I am, drawn to situations that for me are very fun. Like I'd like to have fun, have a good time. For me, that might mean something different than it might be for you, but still I, I like to have fun in what I'm doing. Yeah. I like the enjoyment, the amusement. So again, looking at things that I was constantly just, your inner being hopefully I'm not getting too woo-woo for the listener here, but your inner being, that inner soul of you will always be drawn to things that light it up to the joys. And that is getting very, very close to values. If, if you value fun like I do, you're constantly going to want to be drawn to situations that are fun. And you might not wonder, you might wonder why, or it might not make any sense, or you know, the parents in your life might be like, oh, well, why are you always doing these things and spending your money on this stuff? Again, spending your money. Yeah. I would gladly spend my money on like a concert if it was time for that or a party <laughs> or a vacation. Like where would you spend thousands of dollars? Look there and, 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 and doing it constantly and that trend over time. I'm always drawn to situations that I'm going to get a new experience, a fun experience, novelty. And so I kept asking myself, you know, why am I always drawn to these situations? What keeps me going back? But I'm a naturally very curious person. And so I think, yeah, you, you have to have that curiosity of a, of a five-year-old. I think you, you wrote in your blog like that. Very oh, curious, yeah. why, why, why am I doing this? Like, what's drawing me to that? Yeah. That's how I, that's how I found out my values. And then when I, when I built this values exercise that I do in my program, I did it as a test and I came up with six and they were all pretty good. And I actually did it right before we were recording this to see if it had changed from the summer. And I dropped one and added another, so. Was that was that a big thing to do? No, it doesn't take long. Like uh, I do them, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes if I'm doing it with a client, I lead them through it. So what we do is I ask them a series of questions and then they pick, they have a values list that they choose yep. from, similar to the one that you kind of linked in your blog. Mm. and. Um, by the end of the exercise, they're going to have like 20 to 30 different values. Some of them are on there a few times, which is how you know <laughs> it comes up a lot. So for me, freedom is there throughout. Yep. And then what we do is we shrink them into clumps. So we take like we take like values and we put them in like similar chunks. Like I said, mine was, you know, freedom, independence, exploration, experience. They all kind of go under freedom for me. And so then we have like five or six that are core and then the sub ones after that. And so we look at those and I ask them some questions like, how do you feel about these? Do when you read these, do they, what comes up for you? Would you be um, proud to share these with someone that you respect and admire? And when the exercise is done and they're, they're done right, the person usually, ha it's not, they're not surprised like, oh, that makes sense. Like, yeah, this is totally me. It's like that yeah. suit. It's like putting on that suit and be like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can move in it. I can, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's built for you because it is you. And I'll tell the listener slash viewer one question they can ask, and this is from my exercise. I'm not going to give the whole thing away. But one of the questions I ask, and it's a really good one, um, who is someone that you respect and admire and why? Mm -hmm. Why? because we tend to be drawn to other people, the values that either are aspirational for us or that we embody ourselves. It's a really good tip. So, so who, who, who do you admire or, or respect? Yeah. yeah. And why? And why? 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 What do they represent to you? That's, that's really, that's genius. And that's critical. Cool. Like, what do they represent? Because that's where the good stuff is. Exactly. You got to uh, have that curiosity. You have to always be asking why. 
and in a non-judgmental way, right? Like like we do as coaches, we we just ask questions. It's, there's no judgment. It's just let's ask questions just for the sole purpose of bringing it to awareness. That's it, not to judge. Bring yeah. it to awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know the, the 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 very first sign of judgment there, self judgment is just like, well, I shouldn't have that. Exactly. Yeah, the shoulds. The shoulds. <laughs> The shirts, shooting everywhere. That's that's terrible. Um, not terrible. We all do it, but it's a very clear sign that you know we're we're um, when we're, we're not there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet. We've got to keep going. Um, well, it's hard not to shoot all over yourself when we live in a society where we have to share with people and like we're just socialized to should like from the moment we're children to how we grow up like we we should please our parents we should be respectful some of them are good some of these are things that we you know should do uh in my opinion but it's just um, it's just a it's part of being a human sharing this planet with what, how many are we six seven billion other humans mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and I, I think you know we should look both ways before crossing a street yeah that's um, a good one <laughs> that's a that's a good should that's a good should yeah. you know wash your hands a mask yeah. if you need to um, yeah yeah they're, they're good shoots so when it comes to your values michael how do you use them Ooh. like how, how slash when do you use them um decision making is a big one um investment of money and time when I'm setting my schedule, when I'm deciding, should I do this? Should I do that? I want to should <laughs> in alignment with my values and they help me there. Or if I'm, you know what, if I'm feeling in a, in a really out of alignment place, if I'm not feeling great, if I'm, if I'm moody or feeling negative or just feeling shitty about my life, I kind of look at my values. And usually what has happened is I've that Venn diagram has shifted and I'm not in alignment with them in some shape or form. And it kind of, it's like an anchor. It's like an anchor that kind of brings me back. Like, okay, you're you've shifted over here. You gotta come back. And, and then it helps me see why, why that is and how to sort of get back on track. Um, certainly for life goals and decision-making. Like when I, when I lost my job 2019, um, the pragmatic thing to do was, of course, to go get another nine to five job. I was a very a senior manager in a great corporation and all the shooting was like, yep, just take your resume, go to the next place and you'll get a job. But I was like, yeah, my values are not, they're not about stability. I have no values about that kind of thing or whatever corporate worlds represents for people. Mine are like fun, <laughs> independence, freedom, growth. And so I decided to take a chance and go the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial route. Yeah. And that wouldn't have been done if I didn't know my values. That's really, thank you for sharing that because I completely, I completely agree. Yeah. Like I almost put this in the blog post that, you know, values are for life. Like the kind of like, you know, puppies at Christmas, uh, you know, a, a value, you know, puppy, like puppies grow into dogs and, you know, puppies are a gift for life. And values are a gift for life that we can give ourselves like, and, and knowing what our values are, help us with those big decisions. I would uh, like to add to my answer <laughs> once you're done. <laughs> No, no, and this is an exam. Uh, there is no more adding uh, at the end of it. But, but the, 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 the final thing I'll say is like the values help on those big decisions. Like, you know, need to like, it's always work. Work is like the great example. Um, and, and, you know, we can agonize about, should we take this job? Should we not? Um, but it's also like even down to like just, what seems to be the minor decisions in the day that you're not really quite sure of how to progress. Those values are, as you say, something that we can fall back on. Um, so, you know, a value, values help us make decisions 
full stop. Big, small, irrelevant. Um, uh, values help us make those decisions. And course correct. So like if, and if course you're in, correct, yeah. Right. So if you're not feeling, if you're feeling disillusioned for whatever reason, start mm. going go into your values book. Hey, where what are my values and am I am I living them or am I not? Or you know, how much am I living them? How much how much am I not? And that can help you course correct. Okay, I need to shift over here now. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you were gonna add something. Yeah, of course. How can I forget? The other thing was that <laughs> the whole reason I do this exercise in the first place, confidence. Right. Confidence in self, uh, confidence in, in my ability to be me, right? It, it falls, falls completely into authenticity. So if you remember what I said at the beginning was that I teach that confidence is something that you create on the inside and you create it on the inside when you live in alignment, authentic alignment with, with your values. So you have to know what they are first. And when you live in alignment with yourself, you learn to love yourself and love your life. And when you do that, confidence is the natural byproduct. And that's what I teach. So when you are kind of living in that place of confidence with who you are, uh, unapologetically, shall we say, then a lot of the noise around me just kind of fades away because I'm living in my truth and I'm very grounded in those values. And it's not from a place of arrogance or not like that shadow side of, of confidence, which I think is not really confidence, but this groundedness in like I know who I am. I know my values. I stand by them. I'm proud of them. And the rest of it is not as relevant. All, all of the shoulds become less noisy. I'm a lot more focused on what I have to do and why. I'm able to overcome fear, doubt, a lot easier when I'm grounded in those values. Um, when you're disconnected with your values, I believe you're disconnected with yourself. And that's what yeah. causes that disillusionment with yourself, with life. It, doubt becomes very big when you're disillusioned with yourself and disconnected with yourself. So yeah, I'd say the big answer, and I can't believe I forgot to say this, is confidence. That is one of the biggest reasons why I do this exercise with my clients. That's, that's just beautiful. That's just beautiful because you, you hit the nail right on the head. Knowing your values helps us know ourselves. Being connected to our values helps us connect to ourselves. Yeah. And you know this, um, and long-time listeners and readers uh, of The Loneliness Guy know this, that I say that there's three pillars of connection. And the first pillar is connection to self. The second is connection to, to those most important to us. And then the third is connection to community. But when we talk about loneliness and then connection as the antidote to loneliness and putting yourself out there, if we focus on the out there. We focus on connecting to those most important to us. We focus on connecting to community. That's great. Connection is connection is connection. And it helps fill that void that loneliness had like, the, 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 the void that we feel within us, that is loneliness. But unless we are authentically connected to ourselves and put ourselves out there, the risk is, the very real risk, is that whatever connection we make under pillars two and three to others and to, to community is hollow yeah. because we're not putting our real authentic selves out there. And this is why knowing and then living very consciously, very deliberately, our own individual bespoke values is so critical to the lonely person, the lonely gay man who wants, who recognizes that they need to put their authentic selves out into the world or put themselves out authentically into the world. Right. This is why yeah. it's so important, listener and viewer. And, and you know what? I think to to a particular i'm trying to think of sort of uh, someone who may be new new to this kind of work that might sound like such a cop-out answer they're like oh, i don't want to connect with myself i want to connect with other people but it's very important to know that that relationship you have with yourself is a template for all of the relationships you will have with other people if you cannot connect with yourself if you cannot learn to love yourself even intimacy, I do a lot of work with intimacy. If you don't know how to be intimate with yourself, uh, emotionally, intellectually, um, it is going to be very hard for you to learn that 
in the outside world because doing it with yourself and then learning your own values and learning um, who you are doesn't sound like exciting work that really gets you what you want, but it does because that, that is the template. You, you start there and once you know what that feels like, oh, okay, cool. This is what connection feels like. This is what vulnerability feels like, even if it's with yourself, then yeah. you can start to apply it with uh, a lover, a friend, a family member, whoever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really does. Like values are the key in my mind. Knowing your values is the key to knowing yourself. And you know what? That, that list that you put on your blog, when I clicked on it and I kind of ran through, because uh, Phil put a, a link with a list, like a big, like, must be hundreds in there, of, of values. And I like was skimming through it. And like some of them were just like, blah, blah, blah. Like they just were, they didn't speak to me at all. But then some of them were like, ding, 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 like a red light. So even if you don't want to have to go through an entire exercise and you're just curious, just skim through that values list. And the ones that will stand out to you, you'll just, your eyes will just naturally go there. It's yeah. that easy just to start to, to, to look at those values. For me, and yeah, freedom, freedom is, is my number one. Yeah, and 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 but but on on that skimming through the list, and and that ding 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 kind of response, uh, um, and you know, pay attention to what's happening within you, yeah. as that as that ding 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 ding, like why why, and you know, start to ask yourself the why. Be the inquisitive four or five year old where where you know within unleash that, um, and ask all all the whys. Um, which, which then, you know, elicits that kind of, you know, pay attention to that response, pay attention to that trigger. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and which is, which is my biggest suggestion. Um, you know, you you get that response for a reason why. And there might be times when the value that speaks to you is actually a goal. So I don't know if this is yeah. a value, but some people will tell me, oh, wealth. I'm like, okay. But again, why? Why do you want the wealth? What What are you going to do with wealth? Yeah. Um, How are you interpreting wealth? Right. Exactly. For some people, for me, it's freedom. When I, if I have wealth, I have freedom. So for me, it, again, it goes back to freedom. But for other people who maybe have a family, they might say, "Oh, it's generosity. I want to be able to provide for my family." Like, okay, now we're getting some. Yeah. Or uh, you know, there's all the reasons why we want wealth. So wealth, I would say, would be the goal, or you'd build a goal around making X amount of dollars whatever that wealth goal is. And then the why is, is where the values are yeah. hidden. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a, that's a fantastic tip. And I write in there, Michael, about the, about the paying attention. Um, mm. And mm. that, that, that at once is like beautifully simplistic and elegant advice if I you know do say so myself but also it can be like so frustrating <laughs> to receive that advice pay attention you know uh, you know light light some incense um, and and sit and meditate in my mind sometimes paying attention um, you know equates with with that and of course it's not it doesn't have to be. If it if it if that floats your boat, let that float your boat. Um, but for me, one of the uh, I remember doing this exercise and you know finding out who who I am. And I recall going for a walk one lunchtime uh, from my job, and I was I was living and working in Seoul in South Korea at the time. And I remember, um, you know, and I had no appreciation of this at all, but, um, you know, South Korean makeup stores are everywhere. They're just, you know, and, and like shopping strips in Seoul and indeed all the way through Korea follow a similar pattern. It's like coffee shop, phone shop, makeup shop, repeat. Uh, and, you know, Starbucks becomes uh, another coffee chain and then another, like, you know, and then you've got SK Mobile and then you've got K KT and then, and then it, like, it's, it's pretty much, you know, rinse and repeat, you know, for entire shopping strips um, with, the, with the same kind of, of shops. 
And I remember going in and like walking past these, these shops and it was a, like, I could still, I can feel it still. It was a really hot, muggy, terrible day. And I was wearing a suit, um, feeling very uncomfortable, but I decided to go a, a shady option, like not a dodgy option, but there was shade. I was walking, not, not in the sun, in, in sunshine. And there were probably three makeup shops in a row. And in Korea, um, you get things for free. So you could buy something and then they're like, I'm just going to chuck all of these things in, in for free. And it turns out that, you know, there's these, you know, the, the face masks of like snail guts or, or whatever it is that, that you know, um, that, you know, here in, in Wellington, like there's a, there's a store here that sells them and they go for like 25 bucks a pop or something like that. You get them for free, <laughs> like uh, at these, these stores in, in Korea. And I remember walking past and I tutted like an old man. I was like, oh, oh, that's terrible. What a waste. What a waste. Like all of this packaging, all of this stuff that just, you know, getting like churned out into the world an industry that feeds off making people feel bad about themselves and convincing people to buy products that they don't need. And not only like, you know, South Korean women spend like the most out of the entire OECD on their appearance. Mm -hmm. And all from this tut tut, all of this. Uh, and I found myself, you know, in, you know, in, in, in the steps thereafter, you know, getting into my own head and like, you know, like really sort of paying, like, you know, getting, getting on this thing. It's like, you know, so much wastage around me and selling stuff that preys on people's insecurities and, um, uh, yeah, and, and not like lack of value that preys on making people feel less valuable about themselves. That, that came out wrong. But, you know, questioning someone's like our, making us question our own value as a human and being pretty enough, being yeah. handsome enough in Korea, being white enough. Um, and I thought, you know, and I was doing this, this exercise and the whole exercise was about paying attention. And then almost, well, no, not almost, literally, I stopped dead in my tracks. I was like, oh, I've just been triggered. I've been triggered and I've gone on like this, this, you know, a few minutes in my head. It was probably a few seconds, but, you know, this, this whole thing in my head, I've been triggered. And I whipped my phone out of my pocket and I just wrote a note down. And for me, one of my, like, I, I, I'm a minimalist. So, you know, I've moved uh, in over the course of the last 20 years, I've moved countries a lot. <laughs> uh, and I'm in the process of, of moving back to Australia. And moving is so much easier when you have less stuff. And, you know, looking at minimalism and simplicity. So minimalism started with having, you know, fewer clothes. Now, you know, it's, it's having nothing in my life that doesn't bring me joy. And I was triggered by the opposite of minimalism and waste. It's like that stuff, if it's not used, even when it is used, all just goes into landfill. Yeah. And that triggered me. And I'm like, Ooh, why, why, why? Went through the exercise, got the, unleashed the inner five-year-old and just went, why, 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 why? And I came up with the value of committed. Which one? Committed. Committed? Being, being, being committed. So if I hold something to be like valuable to me, whatever it is, to be of value to me, someone, something, I'm committed to it. Hmm. Um, and, you know, so that, um, uh, like, so I say yes to things that I know will be in alignment to my value. 
So, and if it's, uh, uh, if, if, it, if I don't feel aligned after some reflection, then it's a no. If I don't think it is going to align with all my other values, then it's a no because it's going to be a no eventually anyway because my effort that I put into it is not going to be wholehearted. Right. That came from that little, little trigger of walking past makeup stores in Korea. Uh, yeah, and, and okay. still that, like, you know, say no to plastic, you know, um, minimize, minimize waste, make conscious decisions, um, that, that, um, that, that benefit, um, me and the environment. There's certainly a lot of information in our triggers, even though they don't feel that there's so much information in our triggers. That is a great example of how you can use them to uncover and reveal your, your values. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 you know, I I remember like I shared with the the, the group that I was doing um, through the coaching program. I shared with the group, and I'm like, I stopped dead in my tracks. Like it hit me like an absolute lightning bolt. Um, and then there are others that were a lot easier. Um, but one of I've got six values. Six. I'm holding up five fingers. <laughs> um, but my other hands, my my other hands holding up, uh, holding a microphone. So if I showed six, um, six fingers right now, there'd be an awful clunk. I wonder if we have any of the same ones. Oh yeah. I'll, okay. I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to. All right. What are yours? Okay. <clears throat> I just did this today. Yeah. Um, fun. No particular order. Fun. Connection expression, freedom, growth, and empowerment. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Connection. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. 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 On the on the that film on the film Michael Venn diagram, uh, <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's that's the common um, on the that's, podcast that's called Connection Over Coffee. How perfect is that? <laughs> I know. And you know, connection C coffee C. <laughs> mine, mine um, all start with C. And this was not oh, deliberate. No. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this was not deliberate. So um viewer, listener, Michael, my my values are um in the blog, and they're also there's an explanation of them um in um the about fill part of the loneliness But mine are collaboration. Yeah. Connection or being connected, um, challenging. So questioning why, challenging the status quo, not accepting just because, or oh, this is how it's always been done. None of that shit with me, thank you. Um, committed, as I said, and there's mm -hmm. caring. So, mm -hmm. you know, I will care for you, uh, uh, you know, when, when, you know, you're in my group, like when, when, when you're there, like you're there and I'm, I'm caring for you. I care about you. I care for myself. Um, and then for, for a while, for a while, for like maybe two years, it was only five C's. And then I started doing work and then I realized that courageous um, needed to become my sixth C. I've been debating for a little while about adding a seventh C curiosity um but i think that that kind of can go into being committed um so there might be a, a sub value i like that one you said before that that term sub value but for me um and and courageous courageous has been hugely influential on me for me over the past few years so you know i recognize that there was a need for a real conversation around loneliness first in diplomats, now for gay men. Um, and that value, courage is a value that sounds really great. But then you realise that it compels, if you have it as a value, it compels you to actually be courageous, to make, like, to put yourself out there. 
and to speak up, um, to have the uncomfortable conversations, to say to your wife with whom you're in love and who you do love and, you know, have been together for no, almost 20 years that you're attracted to men. Like courage, courage compels me to have good conversations and really fucking hard conversations. Yeah. Um, and the conversations are ones that you want to avoid, you want to wish away or whatever, but you just know, you know that you have to have them. Um, uh, yeah, so they're my six. Good. Yeah, so so one, we have one the same, a lot of similar, but one the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're both wearing bespoke suits and look how sharp and snappy we are. Right, and, and, and together, when there's two people together that are aligned with their values, they can do so much more. Exactly. Uh, and, it, and it's not about me having to have yours, yours having to have mine, like that's not what that's about. It's just, and this kind of goes to collaboration. The more we can collaborate and have all these different people representing different values, the greater power we have as a community, as a collective, as a, as a group. Exactly, exactly, exactly right. And for me, collaboration is the opposite of competition. Yeah. And some of my work environments, and I'm phenomenally competitive, phenomenally competitive, like if, it, uh, and, <laughs> but I realized through awareness that some of the things that I've, dis, uh, I, I regret most in life came when I sought to compete. Right. Uh, and that led me out of integrity. Yeah, so it's going back to that, looking at the regrets and the joys, the tops and the bottoms of your life, because whatever you regret most is likely going to lead you, if you go, if you do the wise, will lead you to one of your values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I love it. I love, I love the connection through collaboration. And there's yeah. two, two that, that uh, um, and if, you know, they, they, you know, those, those, those lights, the, the bells, the whistles all go off uh, if all six, uh, you know, get a tick. Um, yeah. And so, Michael, I don't know, how do you, how do you hold yourself to your values? Hmm. Um, I mean, I'm a question because pretty... I'm going to answer this for me soon. Okay. Um, I'd say I'm a fairly introspective person. I, I mean, in terms of the stuff I do, I have a, a journal that I write in. Um, for me, that's my kind of expression to myself it's my it's where I document my relationship with myself um I know them which is a good thing and I'm living more to them now than I ever have been and I hope to, I hope that that's a trend um how do I hold myself to them I guess I don't I don't have anyone holding them to them besides me so it is a lot of work on my it falls upon me to do that but I think I just check in with myself. There's a lot of checking in, a lot of that um, introspection. Doing this exercise, I'd say once every six months these days to make sure that, you know, they're still the same. Um, but I know when I'm out of it because I don't feel, I don't, I don't feel good about myself. I feel unaligned. I feel disillusioned. I feel cranky, angry, um, frustrated, stressed. When I'm in those feelings, it's like, it's like an emotional guardrail. It's like, oh, I've swerved off the road. I'll just get back onto the road. And so I don't, I guess that's why I pulled myself to it. It's like a, a naturally, my emotions just do it for me. It, mm. like, course correct whenever I start to feel bad about my life or myself. I, I'm, I'm going to just admit that that, you've said it a couple of times so far in this chat that you know paying attention to those those roiling frustrations within us uh and yeah that that that's been thank you it's been a a, a great reminder for me like yeah i've been feeling frustrated i've been feeling all sorts of different uncomfortable emotions in the last few weeks um and yeah the reminder to 
get uh, to to make sure that I am in alignment with my values, how I how I know that I want to live my life is very timely. Thank you. Like, and, and you know, that was that was not prepared. That was, you know, that's I just want to let you know that that's something that I've learned from 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 this chat. Um, and for me, in a very similar way to you, um, like I, I journal uh, about it, and you know, I've I've fallen off the journaling wagon the last few months, but in the last few weeks, have have got back into it, and I do it at the end of the day. Um, and you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I've got a journal. I'm so tired. I don't want to do it. Um, and of course, it only takes five minutes because no one else is reading my journal except for me. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I um, go through and do um, like go. Okay, how was I collaborative today? Um, how was I, you know, how was I committed? How did I care? You know, what did I do that was courageous that I'm, I'm, I can, you know, acknowledge within within myself? And most times, that's a yeah, I did this, and I've got a very real example, or more, oh, I've got an example that I, I, I'm, I'm, I didn't live up to my own values, and that's why it feels really shit. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, maybe an apology is needed, or you know, uh, some focus on that for the next few days. Yours is so much more tangible because you have, first of all, you have them written down all over your place and in your office, right? Yeah. And the second thing is if you, if you do that in your journal, I don't, I, that's not part of my, I'll check in with myself like once, at least once every quarter, maybe once a month, and I'll look at them there, but I do not, certainly don't do it every day. Mm. Um, so you're, you're definitely a lot more tangible and methodical about it, which is interesting. I, I I'm trying to think of how I would do that. I mean, certainly these days, I can't say that I have fun every day. I mean, in my own way, I guess I am having fun. I'm learning how to have fun in a different way. I'm learning how to have fun through being an entrepreneur. I'm learning how to have fun through building a business. I'm learning how to have fun through this, what we're doing right now. I'm learning how to have fun. So, you know what, that, you've given me a good idea. I think I'm gonna try that out for, for a week and see what that feels like for me to, to every day, literally every day, look at my values and see if I've uh, lived into them that day. And listener, viewer, um, I don't know if you want to join Michael in, in trying this for seven days and I'd love to hear from that and from you. And, and I know Michael uh, will too. So, you know, if you want to share your views and, and want to, ask for help and tips and tricks and advice and, you know, pitfalls for young players and things like that, you know, <laughs> consider uh, coming and joining the, the premium subscribers group on, on Facebook. Um, and, and we can, we can dive into it, into it there. And, but yeah, like Michael, you've hit the nail on the head is like, yeah, I am very methodical. Um, you know, there's, there's a spreadsheet. I love a good spreadsheet, uh, love a good table. Um, and you know, the, the, the efficiency of information, um, is, is, is a beautiful thing for me. So final question. And, and I realized that, that, that this, this, this coffee is, is raging way out of, uh, out of control, but I think it's, it's, well, first of all, it's a fantastic, I know I'm in, oh, no, I'm not, not empty. There's dregs. There's drinks. <laughs> the, the 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 I like French press coffee, but you know when when you you like you're just left with with crunchy chewy dregs of coffee um, uh, uh, at the bottom of, of the mug. But um, I want to ask this final question: um, yep. How have your values tying this back to loneliness? How have your values helped you through periods of like knowing your values, living your values, helped you through periods of loneliness? Again, this is gonna sound like a cop out answer, cop out answer, I think, but but give it anyway. Okay. <laughs> when I'm feeling lonely, at least my experience of, of loneliness has been very much lonely as in like not having another person. Um, 
So when I have that feeling, I kind of land, it's like a soft landing, softer landing, knowing that I still have that connection to self. And I kind of go inwards simply because I'm, I have no choice. <laughs> I have no one to, to connect with on the outside. So I, I then turn inside and connect inwards. And it's like the self soothing. It's like the self compassionate version of me that emerges to give myself a, a, a like a, a hug. <laughs> um, so for me, I think knowing my values, again, goes back to knowing myself. Knowing my values means knowing myself. Knowing myself means it's easier for me to love myself. When it's easier for me to love myself, I can I can give myself that self-soothing, self-compassion when I'm having those like moments of loneliness where, again, for me, it's, it's a loneliness that is like, I am missing somebody else. Like I'm missing my other person or I want someone to connect with. I want to cuddle with someone. For me, it's usually comes into it with affection. So I think that's, that's how it helps me. It, it, it kind of gives me more sense of self on the inside. Beautiful answer. I love it. The, 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 the self soothing. And I feel, I feel like right now, as you're talking, I'm like, Ooh, this is going to be great for the promo. Because it, it's, it's right. It, it's self soothing. It's self soothing. It's that self reassurance that, you know, you might not have someone physically, mentally, or emotionally right with you. Yeah. You might be feeling, you know, uh, 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 that that void or or that emptiness that that really discomfort that discomfortable <laughs> uncomfortable discomfort um of not of of loneliness that 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 awful void and the questioning of your own worth yes coming back to your values shows that you do have worth exactly you can still feel the loneliness. It's still gonna. It's sort of separate from my worth. It becomes a sort of different thing. Like I'm feeling lonely, not I am not worthy of connection. Yeah, that there's a difference. And and when I didn't, I, I can tell a difference in my life when I felt lonely before and I didn't have that. It was certainly a I am unworthy. I'm lonely because I am unworthy of of other people loving me, and that was the flavor of loneliness that I had at the time. Now it's more of a, I'm feeling lonely. And this is a feeling that I experience from time to time. And I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still at the end of the day, I know that I'm worthy of love and connection and attention and belonging and all these things. Yeah. So it doesn't make the loneliness go away, I'm going to say, but it, it certainly is a softer landing. Yeah. 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 Almost an acceptance of those thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And then, and then with the acceptance, kind of, doing the soft landing. Right. And then you can kind of emerge out of it um, sort of at your own pace um, without this graspy, needy, like, I don't want to be here. I can't be here. It's kind of like, okay, here we are. I'm like, I got you. I got you, boo. I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> I live alone. So uh, I got you. you no, know, like, I'll, I'll do that. I'll actually say that. Like, okay, it's, we're having one of those moments, Michael. We're, we're just gonna, we're gonna soothe myself through this and we're gonna do the things I know that help me. And I have my own sort of list of things that help me in those moments. And I, and I can go to them for help. To emerge with confidence, perhaps even. Ah, look at that. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence is, is having that ability to have your own back, knowing that challenges are gonna happen to you and things are gonna go wrong for sure. Um, but it not breaking you to the point where it affects your worthiness. That's what true confidence is. And that's what I try to teach people. Confidence isn't everything that goes right and perfect for me all the time. It is the opposite. It's like things are going to go wrong for everybody, but a confident person will like break, let themselves break down because it's okay. And then like pick themselves back up and be like, okay, cool. Let's get back at it. <laughs> Through the application of values. Right. Michael, it is always like just soul nourishing, soul gasmic <laughs> to have uh, to have a chat with you, whether we record it or not. Um, and 
Yeah, uh, uh, I'm so very, very grateful to have um, have you in my corner and to benefit from your just casual wisdom. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, it, it's I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm very confident. I'm very sure, like I just have, that the listener, um, the viewer has also benefited enormously from from your your wisdom um, and 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 insight. Thank you so much for having me and for creating the space again. Not not at all. And just before you go, uh, for those who uh, have been inspired, um, uh, I will say uh, that you can find, uh, you can access Michael's work um, as a coach, as a confidence coach um, in uh, through my website on the loneliness guide. And there's going to be a link in the episode description um, that you can go through a landing page onto, onto his site through my site. And or Michael, they can they you know the the listener, the viewer um, who really wants to have a chat further with you, how can they find you? So many ways. I would love to hear from you first of all. Um, I do love hearing from people who find me, and I love having conversations just like this. Uh, usually these days it's through DMs, but. You can find me, I'm fairly active on my Instagram. So that is somewhere where you can DM me probably in like the next two minutes and I'll probably reply fairly quickly. My Instagram is wellismo underscore coach, W-E-L-L-I-S-M-O underscore coach. Um, my website is www.wellismo.com. You can find me there and you can get a good look at the kind of services I provide. And I write a blog as well. I'm also a writer. Um, so you can get a little His little blog fun. is awesome, by the way. His <laughs> blog is awesome. Thank you. That's high praise coming from you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and um, if you are coming from Phil's site, just know that anyone who is a friend of Phil is a friend of mine and uh, gets special VIP rates to my coaching programs. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'd love to hear from you all. Yeah. And, and I think this, this time, this time of you know second COVID waves, third waves, um, and and as shitty and as awful and as scary really as it is uh, that you know we know we know people directly affected, people who are um, really like it, it's horrendous. It's horrendous. Um, you know unprecedented times in our lifetimes. In everything, though, there's an opportunity, and perhaps the opportunity presented by um, this enforced cocooning that you might be going through right now is a time to do some work within yourself. Totally. So when you do emerge, there's no going backwards. When you're in a cocoon, you can't go backwards. The only way is to go forward, and you can be, do some work now, begin doing some work now, um, and emerge back into the world, being awesomely yourself and putting your authentic self into the world. There is yeah. a better time. I would agree with that. And, and I did the similar, similar work myself in the first wave, uh, but this is a great time to, to really dig into yourself, to get to know yourself, to develop that relationship with yourself through self-awareness, um, learning how to love yourself, learning how to, that self-soothing we just talked about, um, an emotional, Emotional intelligence, I think, is a great one because a lot of us now are dealing with anxiety and uncertainty. And these are this is the perfect practice course for learning how to handle these emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't wait to have you back on again. Um, yeah, you know, and, and now that I've deputized you essentially as co-host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Michael, thank you. It's been awesome. Until next so time. Much. Until next time, bye-bye. All right. All right. Good. You are, thank you so much for joining us uh, through all of this. Uh, it's time to perhaps go and, and refill the coffee mug or do something else, but 
Thank you so much for joining us, viewer. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye, viewer. Thank you.